He's going to explode at any moment. Oh, I think Problem X mistimed it a little bit. And the super is actually going to hit, no? Oh, it didn't hit, but he got plus frames? Oh my god, it's so close. Throw mix up. Oh, no! The worst feeling in Street Fighter V. If you've watched any of my Street Fighter League breakdowns over the past couple of months, you definitely know about Street Fighter League Japan. Considering I've made 33 of these videos over the past couple months, it's also possible that you know about Street Fighter League US because I participated in it and I went over one of my matches, my last match uh, in this video right here. But there was a third Street Fighter League this year actually, Street Fighter League Europe. And basically the idea is the champions of each of these Street Fighter Leagues will then go face off against each other at Capcom Cup in the Street Fighter League World Finals. Idom, the Capcom Cup 2019 champion, actually said Street Fighter League EU was the best one in his opinion. And that was mainly because of the large amount of character diversity that Street Fighter League Europe has. If you've been watching the Street Fighter League Japan videos, you know that there have been a lot of Lukes, a lot of Cody's, a lot of Urians. Street Fighter League US has also had a lot of Lukes. But Street Fighter League EU only actually had one Luke main out of its 24 players. And today we're going to break down the last three matches of the grand finals of Street Fighter League Europe, see what it's all about, and see who actually comes out as the champion in that region. Before we get into it, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below. Helps the channel out a lot actually, and let's get into the video. So the grand finals was between Mao's Esports and BMS. Mao's comprised of players from the UK, and BMS was players from France. They had kind of a regional uh, team sort of thing going on for Street Fighter League Europe. And up first we had Kills You and Four Fills and these are actually two really young players I think 20 and 21 that have really been making a name for themselves the past two years. Uh, Kills You qualified for Capcom Cup last year, Four Fills qualified last year and also this year. Kills You also notably had this heartbreaker of a match against Daigo at EVO where he missed a punish that would have won him the set against Daigo Umehara and ended up getting knocked to losers um, because of that very small mistake. So basically all of that summary of these two very great players is just to say that they are world-class players and they can compete with the very best. And the matchup here was Karen versus Falk, their main characters. Kills you definitely did main Karen last season, but most Karen mains dropped her this season, Phenom and uh, Punk and also Bonchan, right? They were Karen mains. They all switched to Luke. Uh, for the most part, Punk plays a couple other characters as well. But Kills You is kind of the one Karen main that has kind of stuck true. But this is also not a great matchup for Karen, I don't think. I would imagine that uh, they were probably counterpicked by Miles Esports in this situation because I feel like Karen would have a hard time getting in against Falk's long button because Karen is like, you know, a button footsies character. And that doesn't really work out when you're getting outranged by like Falk's towards heavy punch, her crouch medium punch, but when Karen gets in, she can make stuff happen. Is it about to be a perfect back-to-back? -back? No, he gets a little bit chipped down right there. Nice activation off of that. You have to activate off of- oh, what a bait. Nice jump back. Great defensive option right there. Actually beats a couple of things. If he tried to throw him, he would have jumped back out of it. The only way you can actually just beat an immediate jump back is by by mediating, or maybe like catching it with with an anti air on the way down. But mostly midi is your only option against that, which makes that and back dash great defensive options because most most players don't want to just waste their turn doing a midi. They want to do like a delay button, or as Fourfills did right there, he wanted to make a comeback by doing his V trigger flip. Oh, V trigger activation right there. Good on him finding the hit. And now it's like very close to killing for both characters. This is so dangerous. Actually, Kills You spends one meter to get in. I guess in this matchup, it makes sense because getting in is the important part. Nice punish, but he didn't get the full thing. That could have been huge. Punish? Oh no, he got a super. No. I don't know if he had super there, but he could have at least swept. But now it's. He could have super. Super! Oh no. 
Okay, he finally does get the back throw. Maybe he thought that was too far away, but I'm pretty sure that super would have hit. All right, so we're going into the second game. Kills you definitely did find his way in, but it was so close at the end. It was pretty much last hit kills for both players since they both got their critical art in the end. Very great resource management. If you if you notice as well from the players that they are able to end up in a situation where their opponent is at 50% life and then one hit's going to kill because they have stocked up the full super. That's a sign of like someone who really understands Street Fighter V to try and like have to win the least amount of interactions before actually winning. Sweep activate immediate. That's going to be it. Spends one bar just to close it out. And Fourfield is actually just getting mauled. Maybe this isn't a bad matchup. From what I'm seeing, like, Falk's lack of great defensive options is really making her struggle against Karen's offense. Karen does, oh wow, he just went for the DP. I'm not even sure that was actually negative against Falk because Falk's a four frame character and he did a meaty shoulder. But he just went for the DP. He goes for the cross up. No confirmed, that would have been it, I think. No confirmed there either? No, I don't think, wait, he spends a super? Okay, now he, kills you actually has full super for himself. Oh, if he activated maybe? Oh, wow, wait, wait, that's a comp? Oh my goodness! That is some Falk mastery right there. What was that? No, he's not gonna come back from this. How did he make that comeback? That was honestly such a crazy comeback. I can't believe he won that round. If he wins this set, that would be actually insane because each set is very important because they all matter for the points for the total set. And this is a 10 point set right here. Those 10 points are pretty important and it's not looking great. The pressure is coming in from four fills. Wait, that's a combo. Oh my God, bro. He's dead, so dead. And that's gonna be one to one off of a crazy comeback last round. All right, so maybe kills you can kind of calm himself down because he definitely actually had it. But then four fills found like a crazy hit that went into so much damage. Like you wouldn't even have thought that was possible unless you've played four fills before, I feel like. That was really cool how he just poked the ball and it, it exploded. Nice little maneuvering right there. It didn't do anything, but it was pretty cool. Kills you in a great position to take the round, but the EXDP comes out. Nice punish on the V skill. It looks like Kills you has lab. The matchup knows when he can interrupt. And one more light kick will do it. Goes for the shimmy with the medium punch. Kills you. Stay calm, composed, and ready to go into this match point scenario with a clean mindset, gets the forward throw, pushes him all the way to the corner. I like that even though it's minus two on that situation, putting him in that block string forces him to actually go all the way to the corner. So even though you're putting yourself at a frame disadvantage, you're actually getting, oh, wait, what? He's about to lose. Wait, you're not telling me there's a 50-50 here. Oh. The restand? Oh, the beat! Nah, this is mad hype. I can see what Idom was talking about. Because I haven't watched these matches myself. This is my first time reacting to them, but I wouldn't have thought that Karen versus Falk could be so exciting. But here we are in match point of this first to two set. And pretty much every round has been like so close definitely some slobber knockers right here steals his turn with the three frame after the minus two situation betting that four fills would press something slower than five frames and now because of that he has corner control i think that might be it oh no he he definitely meant to ex and then that would have been stunned but he has super okay when he don't drop it don't drop it Okay, kills you, cleans it up, finally gets it. He just wanted to make it a little bit exciting at the end. But, you know, he had it in the bag the whole time. Definitely was not uh, uncomfortable by the comeback that Four Pills was making. Definitely not at all. 
and he clutches out that 10 point match for his team. And we're going into another matchup between character specialists. TKR, I'm pretty sure, has been playing Chun Li since the beginning of Street Fighter 5. I'm not sure what he played in Street Fighter 4 if he played that. But I know he has been a Chun Li main for a while. Broski, ever since uh, Oro came out, he's been on Oro. He was a Dalsim main before, but somehow Oro came out. He decided that was that was a character for him, and he is now probably the best Oro in the world. Um, he's definitely a contender for it. Him along with Brian F, and they've definitely been innovating the character and look at that interrupts the ex legs i think he was plus after that so the crouch medium kick interrupted and stun gets the first round he just had real corner control right there you saw the meaty uh spaced out what is that forward medium kicks i think no forward light kicks i'm pretty sure because medium kick is like the hop kick move but when it's spaced out like that i'm pretty sure it is plus but that doesn't matter when TKR has you in the corner and you are stunned, you are dead. Going on to the next round. Broski didn't even actually really get to play there. He didn't activate his V trigger because TKR killed him so fast. Um, and that's something you don't really want to let happen. I'm pretty sure Broski's making sure that he doesn't take those kinds of risks in the future as the set goes on so that he can at least activate his V-Trigger and have a chance at making a comeback because that is one of the best things about Oro, right? And he's actually just going to stun him. I don't think he can kill here, but it's going to be almost death at least. Throw a mix-up and he gets it right there with the perfect KO. All right, so it's one to zero in this match. Uh, kills you did get the 10 points for um, for BMS, Broski is going to want to get the 10 points for Mouse back. It'll be tied 10 to 10, um, at least for this set. Right. Chun Li anti air right there. Back throw. And he's, he's playing the neutral really well right here, but it's been the corner pressure, I feel like, from Broski that has been huge. And also the whiff punishes on the EX legs. Oh my god, the. Oh, that's so unlucky that the EX legs hit like that. Nice anti-air. I think Broski's getting a little bit impatient with these jumps. Maybe he's trying to fake him out with some double jumps later on, but TKR hasn't bitten quite yet. But now you gotta worry about Oro 2.0, maybe like 10.0 right here, because this is where you actually guess wrong once and you lose. That's just, you know, this is a, probably the most broken robbery v trigger in the game oro himself is not like a top top 10 character he might be like top 15 top 20 but one of the biggest reasons he's up there in the first place is because of that tengu stones v trigger it can rob you so well better than any other v trigger in the game because there's so many guesses you get off of it it baits v reversals it you know, you just stick out one crouch medium punch, you're in there, your opponent has to take some throws, and you gotta be worried about it right now as TKR, you gotta kill him, but he's gonna get the activation right here. What is the Tengu Stones mix-up? Chicken feet, back throw, one more mix-up's gonna do it. He's, he's going in, got the homing fireball, got the V-skill, and he just takes the regular fireball in the face. It's tied up 10 to 10 for this set. So I'm pretty sure the way that this grand finals worked was the same way the US one did, where you had to win basically two sets of team battles. Um, the first one actually happened already that we didn't watch, and I'm pretty sure Mao's won. And right now it is tied in the second set. Um, so, I mean, I kind of spoiled it because I said we were going over the last three matches. So maybe you know who's going to win this one, but it's up against Mr. Crimson and Problem X. I don't think they really need introductions at this point because of how good they are. Uh, Problem X is your EVO 2018 champion. He's your Red Bull Kumite US champion from last year in Las Vegas. And Mr. Crimson, he's been tearing it up. Um, people have been calling him one of the best players in the world for maybe like a year now after he won Red Bull Kumite London uh, also last year or maybe those were both in 2021 actually 
Yeah, I guess we can't really call that last year anymore since it is 2023. But Mr. Crimson got the first round. Problem X has corner control here. Wow, what a dash pressure. Nice V shift. Oh, he spends a super. Nice combo into the super. And he's going to slide. Goes for the meaty slide, but he, yeah, he just missed it. Because if it hit correctly, that would have just hit M. Bison right there. There's no invincible back dashes in this game. Okay, V trigger activation. V shift again. The V shifts have been doing so much work against M. Bison right here. Oh, but this guess is going to hurt. And he goes for the midi. Mr. Crimson was holding up because Problem X did have access to that command grab in that V trigger. I'm not sure if the command grab would have killed, but it definitely would have been close. Oh, that would have been such a crazy punish. Plus frames right there. Crimson tried to challenge. Didn't quite work out. Crotch me and punch into the EX fireball. Slide low profiles. Yeah, meaty slide gives him more plus frames, so it gives him access to more combos than he could just by doing a regular slide. That's why he got the, the regular crouch medium kick there. Now he's going to have to worry about the M Bison V trigger. The last round he guessed wrong on the mix up. Now he guesses wrong again, gets the bomb planted in him. He's going to explode at any moment. Oh, I think Problem X mistimed it a little bit and the super is actually going to hit, no? Oh, it didn't hit, but he got plus frames. Oh my god, it's so close. Throw mix up. Oh no! The worst feeling in Street Fighter V. After getting this hit, he baited Problem X's throw right here. He went for the tick throw. He shimmied him. He went for a throw of his own. He missed, and then he got thrown back. That is just not. Um, that is just not a good feeling. And this is such a pivotal match, right? Because if Mr. Crimson loses this, his team is out. Problem X and his team go on to the Street Fighter League World Finals to face off against Good 8 Squad and whoever won from Street Fighter League US. But Crimson's just going to have to pull it together. People say he's the strongest Dalsim in the world for a reason. And one of the biggest reasons is for his defense, but he has just not been able to guess right against Problem X. For some reason, Problem X has all the reads right now, especially with those V trigger activations. I mean, it's just a straight 50 50, but you would think that a 50 50, you have a 50% chance only of landing, but Problem X has landed it 100% of the time so far. He's got another activation here. What is a guess? He goes for the command grab. He's a hundred for a hundred right now. Four for four. It's, oh, that was such a sick mix up, but he guessed wrong again. And he has another bomb planted inside of him. You might think, oh, wait, 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 wait. The combo. Wait, he's almost dead. Slide. What a comeback from Crimson with the crazy combo. But Problem X's offense with his V-Trigger has just been immaculate so far. You might think the command grab isn't a big deal because it does so little damage, but I think if you're paying attention to the, how the rounds are going, him having that bomb planted inside of you is such a great advantage. Um, that's the main thing about taking the command grab you gotta be worried about because uh, Crimson did block the cross-up, but most people would get hit every single time nice catches the landing frames on the dive kick meaty right here one more guess bro is every single time but he wakes up slide i can't believe he didn't get stunned from that command grab he won wait no he didn't wait, no he won he won he won uh, this <laughs> street fighter league europe is so intense right now this is insane all right so now it's one to one the matches have been so close. Each game, either player really could have taken. I mean, I kind of felt like the first game, Mr. Crimson was in control, and then Problem X stole it. And the second game, Problem X was in control, and then Mr. Crimson stole it. So we're going to have to see how, how this ends up. Like, the person that's in control just 
does not seem to maintain that lead for very long because of the explosiveness of each character. Somehow, Dalsim, who is supposed to be a zoning character, is getting all these crazy combos and pressure started. One more hit's gonna do it. Oh, that almost killed. Wow, EX Stomp is projectile invincible, so that's why he did it. But then he did get punished by Dalsim's long normal to stand medium punch right there. Nice anti-air right there. Chooses to save his EX. Sometimes he does a crouch medium punch into the... Wow, he just beats the anti-air. But yeah, sometimes he does it into the EX flame for the mix-up. But I think he's seen it not really work out because of the anti fireable options from M. Bison. So he, he's been easing off on that a little bit and saving his meter just for the damage. Tried to punish. Slide activate. The first time that Mr. Crimson guessed right. right, And he guessed right again. And it looks like he's about to win this game, but we can't count Problem X out. He's plus right there. And the person that's in control just doesn't seem to win. EX Stomp. No, he got hit by that. Everyone gets hit by that. Even the best players. He went back on the same side, just got hit. And now it's not 2-1, it's 1-1 one one on the final round of this game. M misses his combo, but doesn't get the punish. Maybe back medium kick would have worked. He's got V-Trigger activation, but Problem X knew that's why he pressed a button right there. He knew he would try and go for the activation, but now he finally gets it. The jabs have been so on point on the teleports. If he didn't do that, you would see Crimson getting out in such a more free way and not taking as much damage, but look at these plus frames. Nice jab on the dive kick. The defense from Problem X has been great too. Wow, he anti-airs a jump back. Slide, oh, he tried to punish that, and because of that, gets punished instead. And this is potentially the final match of the tournament in this first edition of Street Fighter League Europe. Street Fighter League US has been going on for like three years now. Same thing for Street Fighter League Japan. At least like the large scale ones. But Street Fighter League Europe, this is the first time and they are definitely putting on a show. You know, these are these are character mains that have perfected their characters over the what is it? Six six and a half? Seven? Is this seven years of Street Fighter Five? Is that right? Three plus four? Yeah, seven years of Street Fighter Five, huh? And they've been playing these characters the entire time. Nice defense right there. And the meaty slide. You have to wonder what Problem X is doing right there. Maybe he thinks that the backdash works because the first time it did. But, you know, he's just going to do that meaty slide every time. So, as long as he times it. Oh, the crush counter. Meaty again. Just found a meaty in neutral. Oh, try to get the dash up, but Problem X was mashing to get him off so he didn't have to get stunned. And it's looking at Mr. Crimson's control right here. Plus frames. Face out the command. Oh no, this is so bad. This is so bad. This. God, how is this happening? The comebacks. The tenacity from Mao's Esports. First four fills. And now Problem X. It was looking like it was gonna be two to two. But Problem X said, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this this nah, this is over. This is like such a bad position for Dalsum. He's not only at such a big life deficit, he's also in the corner. He's gotta spend his resources just to get out. I mean, he's doing some cool stuff right- Mix up! Oh! Oh, he doesn't get the combo! Wait, the Grey Life? Oh no, he's gonna get a mix up right here. Wait, hold on. That plus? Oh, the command grab finally does it! It looked like Crimson was about to make that comeback. There were a couple of times when Crimson was about to make comebacks and he just dropped something. But if those just landed... It could have been so much closer. 
But Problem X and his team, Miles Esports, do do it in the end. They will go to the Street Fighter League World Finals. So that's going to be the end of the video. In conclusion, I agree with Item. At least for the Grand Finals, that was definitely the hypest, most intense Grand Finals out of the Street Fighter League US and the Street Fighter League Japan. I haven't gone over the Street Fighter League US ones yet on this channel, but I will make a video doing so as well, going over how DCQ carried UYU to their first ever victory when UYU was at the bottom the two previous years. So that should be a pretty good video. If you like this one though, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.